O'Connor. Yeah, um, thank you so much. And I, I want to thank everyone for their opening statements today. And I want to thank Deputy Whitmore for asking my questions. <laughs> which is fine. It was the voice of the child and the child minders as well. So look, that's important. And I, I think even from us listening today, information is going to be absolutely crucial here and how we actually communicate that information. Um, I, I'll just go back to the department. Um, you spoke about proposals to enshrine uh, interagency cooperation in law, and these are intended to provide a framework for greater and more consistent cooperation from other state agencies, which involve, of course, TUSLA, um, or HSC or Gardaí, which are welcome. But we have challenges within the system. As it is, as we speak at the moment, there is challenges there. So how do you feel in resourcing, in staff? There's huge challenges. So how do you feel as the department we can overcome those challenges? That's my first question. I'll move on to Bernardo's then. Will I go on then? You can come back to me if that's okay, yeah. Um, I, I was reading Bernardo's opening statements and again, um, I think, you know, while you welcome the new guidelines and principles and their focus, I think it's important where you focused on in head four, head seven and all the different heads, the head nine, all the different areas that you have uh, concerns about. And I think we have to make sure we listen to Bernardo's. I, I would very much welcome um, your concerns. But in conclusion, uh, it says that the provision outlined in the bill, if well resourced and well implemented, it has potential to positively impact on children's lives and parents' lives. So maybe you could also see the challenges there. To me, that's your biggest challenge. I really believe it. Unless we have this, this going, that we have enough staff, unless we have enough people that are within the system. Um, the other question is to the ombudsman. Again, there was a note there broadly says, while you welcome the proposal set out for 2023 in the general scheme overall, however, the general scheme appears to be lacking in sufficient vision and ambition. I, I just wanted maybe you to clarify that for me. And then um, Tusla, um, again, I, I just, look, I welcome all the statements, but um, again, we very much welcome the requirement for Tusla to publish general information in our role and responsibilities regarding care proceedings to provide an information booklet to parents and under statement section 25 to strengthen the voice of the child, of course, which is so important. Um, so maybe you could maybe give us some more information on the booklet and what, what you see would be so important there. Because um, this is about the voice of the child and this is about children and what we can do for services, what we can do to work with parents and to what we can do to work with everyone. Again, look, I welcome this. I think it's, it's, it's really important, but I firmly believe we have a lot of challenges here going forward. Thank you so much. Thanks, Deputy. Um, I'll start with the department uh, first. Uh, Thanks, uh, Chair. Um, yes, interagency working. I mean, it's it's a huge challenge, and you know, it's a huge challenge in other countries aside from Ireland. You know, to be yeah. honest, it's it's a very very tricky one. And just to say, I suppose the department would, you know, recognise that obviously there's a number of provisions to promote interagency working in the Act, but that's only the first step. You know, implementation is going to be absolutely crucial, and. It's important to point out, I suppose, that we have a number of kind of interacting provisions that are meant to kind of support each other. So we have the duty to cooperate, um, but we also have the assistance to be provided to the court. You know, the court can look for other agencies to be brought into childcare proceedings if the child, for example, has significant mental health difficulties or the parents perhaps have difficulties as well. So I think that's significant. And in terms of how do we make this real, we're looking to put the Children and Young People Services Committees uh, providing for better local coordination on a statutory basis. There's a regulation making power there for the minister um, to, you know, direct how that the, those operate. Mandated, you know, the, we will be mandating that certain organisations have representatives at those on the SIPSIs. And we are also setting up a national oversight group, which is the National Advisory Committee, which is going to be a committee that is going to have an annual programme of work given to it by the, by the minister, our minister. It is going to be an interdepartmental group. And the intent is that committee is going to be a problem solving committee. And that the minister will effectively ask them to provide solutions for 
interagency collaboration problems um, you know, within that year time frame. So, for example, the Ombudsman for Children set up a round table of a number of different agencies and different government departments to look at this issue of teenagers at risk. You know, they're, they're, Tusla are looking after a large number of them. We're, we have this sort of growing number of teenagers who have these very complex problems, you know, mental health problems, disability, yeah. criminality, yeah. you know, these cases involve things like the grooming we're talking about. And for example, we're, we're proposing to do something in the immediate term with that and that we're planning to you know, bring that work forward with the Ombudsman for Children to look at what we can do before the bill is enacted. But once the bill is enacted, we would very much see that National Child Care Advisory Committee as the forum for that type of problem to be tabled you know, for, that it will be tabled with this IDG, with senior level representation, um, and they will be asked, the committee will be asked to come up with recommendations how to tackle those problems. And the Ombudsman for Children are going to be looking at and testing those recommendations to see if they are robust enough. And, and then they will be set out in an annual report. So, you know, there's no easy way to tackle interagency collaboration coordination problems. And they exist in a lot of different places um, in relation to... Um, you know, a lot of different problems facing children and young people. So I suppose we have to um, create a program of work where we work through all the different program, the problems together. And, and so I suppose, you know, we see those different parts and those different provisions in the Act as, as providing um, the structure that's going to, and framework to allow us to do that going forward. That's important. Thank you. Bernardo's. Yeah, I suppose just to say, this is, is the children need consistency of social workers. You need to ideally have the same social worker when you come in, if you're going into the care system. And indeed, parents who are applying for reunification, they need ideally to have the same social worker. And we know that's a real challenge at the moment because of turnover and issues to do with recruitment and retention. And the other thing I think is really important as well is that is that across each area that there's a plan for ensure there's enough resource to keep children at home that you really can avoid children coming into care if you can because and whatever that might mean it could be early year services it could be after school services it could be practical support in the home it could be the addiction services the mental health services so you the system really focuses on keeping children in their communities and then if children do need to come into care that the system supports them being in care as for as short a time as possible but that needs to be resourced it is both state agencies and it's the community and voluntary sectors to, to support that. And then, then the, the last thing I suppose then is that, is that if children are in the care system again, how can you support their returning home as quickly as possible? And if that's not possible, that you maintain the relationship with, with their family and their community, but you again, back to what Cohen was talking about, you are talking about permanency planning, but it is about, it is about resourcing. And I think there's three social workers here, we're all social workers, so we all have a real passion about it, but I think it's just, you, you, there's nothing like consistency of service, and, and that's really important. Um, did you have a question for the ombudsman? Yes, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I asked just about the the you, while you welcome the scheme, the, it, there appears to be maybe lacking in, in sufficient uh, vision and ambition, and, and just maybe you know it's important that we we hear these concerns. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Deputy, of what we meant by that. Just briefly, and I'll hand over to my colleague to speak further on this. Just around the duty to cooperate, just to put on record a further example you might want to look at. I know the Department has decided not to go with the concept of corporate parenting and legislating for corporate parenting at this stage, which is regrettable, but it's a decision that's been made. Um, be worth looking at the Children and Young People Scotland Act 2014, where in relation to corporate parenting, but there is under that a duty to collaborate. And one of the things that's worth looking at that is they provide, A, you must collaborate, not you may collaborate, you must collaborate. And they provide an indicative list, which is quite detailed um, in terms of what you must collaborate on, uh, which goes beyond sharing of information. And I think interestingly um, includes funding activities jointly. Okay. And there we're thinking about, you know, how funding is, works, um, how the, the, the system is organised into sectoral silos and so on. So it's worth looking at these examples. There's, there's scope here, there's stuff, material here we can draw on. Um, but I'll hand over to my colleague, Neil, just in terms of other examples. 
Um, no, just I suppose what it is, this is 30 years old, this legislation, mm. and this is our time to okay. make it much, much better for future children. And so that's what we meant by to be ambitious. Yeah. So during that 30 years, we've had so many tragic cases. We have so many national review panels. We've had so many cases that we should all learn from to see what can be better. So that's when we talk about, we know there's children that are being exploited by criminal gangs in this country. So what are we doing about it? We, when we believe that we need legislation underpinning to make that better. I'm not going to go on. I think the key message about interagency is incredibly strong. Yeah. Tusla can't fix everything. It's not within yeah. their gift. Yeah. And so other parts of the department, other services need to step up to help these children. Um, so that's when we talk about we need to make sure that no children should be placed in unregulated settings. We believe that teenagers, anyone who's out of home should be in good places for the shortest time possible for a minimum age group. All these things that we have learned, we must include in this legislation. This is our chance. It could be 30 years again before it's reviewed. So just that's what we believe about being ambitious. Okay, well done. Thank you. Thanks. And then, yep, yep. two seconds. Thank you. Just maybe to add to the duty to cooperate a bit, just to, as, as a further piece, and this is something obviously that was funded by the department, but uh, uh, NUIG in Galway obviously recently produced a report in uh, 2021 just examining the whole issue. So they looked at the duty to cooperate across multiple jurisdictions, uh, and I suppose some of their key findings I think are important as well. I mean, they did see that duty to cooperate as a fundamental I suppose, building block, okay. I would say, in terms of interagency cooperation. So they did recognise that. But there are a number of other factors, I suppose, they highlighted in terms of needing to support, I suppose, any legislative requirement of that. Mm -hmm. So it will require as the department have highlighted, I think, you know, very clear statutory guidance that will support, I think, how people work together, significant awareness building about what people's yeah. responsibilities are in that context. Uh, we may have to look at local and national structures that can support that. We may have to review existing protocols yeah. to strengthen them in that context. Uh, resources have been mentioned already by colleagues, I think. Uh, leadership and culture change, mm -hmm. I think, within yeah, organisations as well. Yeah. We have heard that already, uh, I think, in terms of some of the challenges of, of that collective responsibility yeah. and that whole government all agencies approach to children I think is going to be really important. Joint training and learning to support people in working together because you can put people in the same room, you can keep ask yeah. people to work together but they don't always achieve yeah. that. Yeah. So it, they have to kind of be supporting that and then a key aspect of that is monitoring and evaluation that it's working. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much.